welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a story called The Bad Boy and the Mitch, A Whispering Wind. This was a story suggested by Gundam. Thank you Gundam for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And if you're watching this, why don't you check out Gundam's YouTube channel. I'll be putting a link in the description below so you could check it out. And also, if you have any, if anybody watching this have any suggestions on stories or creepypastas or SCPs, let me know in the comments down below. If I read them, I will give you a shout out in the next video. Again, thank you Gundam for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And without any further ado, let's get right into the story. Nana? A voice called it out to her, and a cold, bitter, tundra breeze had brushed her sides, causing her teeth to chatter and her sides to shiver. The girl clutched the sides of her armor tightly, letting out a soft, Huh? Nana? The mysterious voice called it out to her again. Gradually, Yamamoto opened her mocha brown eyes. A peaceful calm filled her being. Her lips were parting slightly. It sounds familiar, she pointed out. It was a strange voice, as it seemed to have come from the robot and not one of many chips in her. She can tell the difference between the inward speak of the interred chip that was lodged in her brain and the talking that other, others do through the speaker chip. A device like a phone implanted into one's ear to take in calls and communication between people without the hassle of carrying a small breakable device. It were connected directly to the internship, however, this voice was nothing like that. The bright lime green lasers were still zapping right at her, just only missing Seven's damaged metallic body. However, the voice was filling her with some sort of hope. It was like a gentle breeze a voice coming out of the machine. She swore that she knew the voice. I... But before Nana could finish her sentence, she was interrupted. Let me drive, the voice said. She was puzzled at first, but then her head started to pound with a jolting headache. Nana was crying out with the pain consuming the sides of her fragile head. A series of bleeps and blops of the control panel began with began and synchronized like an orchestra of loud and blaring noise. The lights shifted from the red to green to blue as Ironclad 7 rebooted itself before her very eyes. The holographic screen appeared before her once more. She stared at it, awestruck. She did not command the robot to reboot, nor did she feel the Ironclad get back on its feet. What? What's going on? Nana pondered to herself before concluding that this must be the autopilot that Atsushi had mentioned to her earlier. Her hands, gloved in blue, gripped the corners of the leather armor rest, whistled her eyes were glued onto the screen. She could see very clearly that the alien ship was gliding very close to them. Once again, her nerves were skyrocketing. Calm down, relax. The 17-year-old heard the voice again. She took deep breaths and tried to focus. Panicking wasn't going to solve anything at this point. In and out. In and out. In and out. She tried to regulate the rhythm of her breathing in attempts to calm down. The voice spoke to her once more. I'm driving now. Don't worry. Just clear your mind and I'll handle it. Nana did exactly that. Listening to the instructions, the teenage girl closed her eyes and cleared herself of her thoughts. The robot was seemingly moving on its own, pulling out its long and shiny katana before charging yet again at the ship. This time was different though. It knew how to dodge the electrical bright beams that were shooting right at them, moving from side to side in order to not get hit with it. Her grip tightened it, though she still had her eyes closed and her mind calm. An old sense of tranquility kicked in as if she and Seven 
were one and the same. Unnoticed to her, there was a soft spot in the magnetic field that surrounded the ship. But the robot knew, or so it appeared. Seven launched itself without Nana's aid, flipping over the large alien craft landing on the other side. It quickly spun around its base before plunging the gigantic metal sword into the craft. The large explosion that it caused woke and shook Nana. She, wa she saw that the thing crashed and fell onto the streets of the Nakagawa ward below. There wasn't a single scream uttered, not from the civilians taking shelter or from the alien inside the ship. The teenager was stunned by what she saw. The destruction that, that not only the extraterrestrial menace had created, but what she and Ironclad 7 created as well. It was going to take a lot of taxpayer money to fix up the Nakagawa ward back to its what it originally was. But then again, they were all used to it by now. Yamamoto, watch out! A booming shout came from the speaker chips inside her small ears. It was not the same voice that had guided her before, but a panicking yelp from one of her teammates. G Gino? She speaked out softly. What are you doing here? She asked, genuinely confused as to why and how Gino Capello had managed to get to the scene on time. No time for questions. The cold-hearted boy screeched out at her through the speaker chip. Look behind you. The girl in blue took back control of the bot and turned around. Her eyes widened at the sight. It was yet another craft, this time smaller. It was going after her, but only to be stopped by another ironclad. This bot was taller and bulkier in size, with a silver coating that dazzled it in the morning light of the springtime sun. It had thrown an oversized net, through, though this net was made of nano steel material that kept the thing from flying off or producing more laser beams. Nana was utterly speechless, frozen in place. Before she could even blink, the larger ironclad generated a large trident-like weapon from its massive hand and stabbed the alien ship with it. It too crashed and burned it to the ground once Gino's ironclad had let it go of it. She nearly jumped in her seat at the sound of it. Shivering a bit, her attention went back to Gino who started speaking to her through the chip again. His tone of voice was very different from before. It had grown softer. Can you check the radar? He asked in a calmer manner. We have to make sure that these things are gone for good. Nana tapped on the holographic control screen that her interchip produced, moving it around and arranging it so she could see the radar perfectly. The green field was empty. It was clear that the threat had been taken care of for now, at least. I don't see anything, she replied back to him. Good. His voice rang out through the speakers. Then we should probably get back to Yoshisada. The girl nodded at his suggestion. Slowly, the two of them walked their mechs side by side towards the port where they descend down into the large laboratory below. The ward was bellowing smoke behind them as an odd eerie calmness fell down on them, then both uneasy. She bit her lip to fight back any ill feelings.